Good day all. Welcome back to HMT's YouTube channel. So in the last module we have seen how to prepare an emergency generator when there is a blackout condition. So as a continuation today we are going to prepare the main generator from a dead shift condition and we also have to understand there is no air pressure in any of the air bottles. So we have already started the emergency generator and we can see the emergency switchboard once we can see all the breakers are on and we have 31.7 kilowatts load on the emergency generator now we will prepare the main generator for starting so first we will start the supply fans for the engine room because air compressors and turbocharger will be drawing a huge amount of air so we require positive air supply in the engine room next we will move on to the main generators in the drop down menu here we can see there are three generators number one number two number three so this is the local platform so we will keep the priming pump in auto the moment we put it in auto it has started okay good the next we will move on to the dg1 control okay so over here you can observe the various parts internal parts of the engine the inlet exhaust valves the turbocharger so you can go through all the various construction of the engine and now on the part of preparation you can see there are three red indications which means these three systems we have to prepare for starting of the engine so first one is the compressed air MP101 ok so over here this is our compressed air systems we have got two in number main air compressors and number two is having the power supply from the emergency switchboard so we will try to prepare this main air compressor for starting there is a jacket water cooled compressor where the jacket water is again cooled by the sea water so first we will prepare the sea water system which is required for the jacket water cooling of the main air compressor so we will navigate to sea water system this is the auxiliary sea water cooling system of this particular ship since our condition is dead ship at port we will be using the high sea chest suctions so I open the suction valve and the delivery valve after the strainer and trace the line towards the suction side of the pump also to the standby pump you can see this red indication states that it is having the power from the emergency generator then the line again I trace to the air compressor jacket cooling fresh water cooler so I open the inlet valve for the cooler and outlet is already open and the discharge of the cooler goes overboard after cooling so now the line is set so that I start the pump and put it in O2 and monitor the discharge pressure of the auxiliary seawater pump also I keep the second pump in standby by just putting the switch in O2 so in case of any emergency if anything goes wrong with the number 2 pump number 1 pump can cut in automatically ok so the seawater cooling system for the air compressor is done now let us trace the line from the main air compressor expansion tank inlet to the compressor and the outlet it goes through the cooler and from the cooler it recirculates ok now trace the line discharge line from the air compressor to the air bottle so we have got two air bottles and only one of the <coughs> air compressor is running currently so we will just keep one bottle filling and the discharge of the air bottle will be filling the emergency air tank and from the emergency air tank we can supply it to the number one main generator so our lining up is done now we can start the 
main air compressor by pressing this C button and click on the start manually and turn the switch to auto. So we can also set the timer for the auto drain that is your unloader. So you can see now it is being unloaded initially so that there is less load on the motor. Now it has started compressing and you can see the air bottle is being filled up. Okay. So we have started the main air compressor and the bottles are being filled up. So we will navigate to the next system. We will go back to DG1 control. Next we will try to set up the fuel oil system for this particular engine MP085. Okay. This is the main fuel oil system. So over here we will be depending on diesel oil right now because in this particular scenario we do not have the steam power also. So since the steam is not available we cannot heat the HFO to make it into use. So this is the diesel oil service tank. Open the Q closing valve. All the discharge valves of the oil based tanks will be Q closing valves. So that in case if there is a fire we can immediately shut it off from a remote location also. Okay, so open this Q closing valve and trace the line to the DO supply pump. Open the valve and here you can see there is a duplex filter before the pump. So trace the line after the discharge to DG1 MP122. Okay, so now here according to the color coding you can see from diesel oil supply pump. Okay, so we open this line and this valve is already open and the return line will go back to DO service tank. After doing this, after setting up the line, go back to MP085 that is your fuel oil system. Click on the pump, start the pump and keep the sequential start on. Okay, and monitor the discharge pressure of the pump. Okay, now again navigate to the DG1 from here. Now we will set up our jacket water system for this particular engine. So we have a jack generator, jacket cooling, fresh water expansion tank. So from the tank open the discharge valve and trace the line towards the suction of the pump. Open the valve and from the pump discharge trace the line back to the engine and from the engine the return line it passes through a three way valve. If the temperature is less it won't go to the cooler instead it will be recirculated. There is a temperature controller over here. If the temperature is more it will be sent for cooling to the coolers and from the cooler it will be recirculated. Ok, open the valve for the standby pump also. Once the line is set start the pump and put it in O2. Ok, so we have started the jacket water system. Cooler we will enable once the engine is started. See what we will be providing once the engine is started. Now there is lube oil cooler. So for the lube oil cooler also we will supply the sea water as soon as the engine is started. Ok, now we have got the air pressure in the air bottle. So we can start this engine now. Normally we build it up to 30 bar but this is sufficient now for starting. So we will try to start this engine. Ok, so let us go into the local area from where we will try to start. In actual conditions you will be doing the blow through before the start but here we will be directly starting. All the indicator cocks are in closed condition so now we will start the generator. As soon as this generator is started check the parameters. Jacket water temperature 
scavenger temperature fuel oil temperatures pressures okay so now we can start the cooling seawater system the lube oil cooler and for the jacket water cooler okay so observe the parameters for the engine ensure that the engine is running good okay so now you can observe over here this priming pump has stopped it is because when the engine started running there is an engine driven gear pump attached to it that pump has started so now this pump is not required because the engine driven lube oil pump has cut in the turbocharger is also slowly picking up the rpm we can see the various strokes and what is actually happening inside the cylinder it is visible over here so all the four strokes we can see very clearly in this now we'll take this particular generator on load so for that we have to go to the local station and change over the switch to remote because we are going to take it on load from the ECR now go to your MSB panel which is there in the ECR and over here you can see number one generator is running and to take it on load click on this connect so over here you can see the generator ACB has been closed and that is on load ok the MSB is live now ESB is also live now we can share the MSB load to the ESB but the load cannot be shared from ESB to MSB only from MSB to ESB the load can be shared through the tie breaker so we will switch on this tie breaker now from the feeder panel we have got the emergency bus bar breaker once you switch it on you can see the main power is flowing to the emergency bus bar and the emergency generator has been offloaded now we can stop the emergency generator and keep it standby so for that stop the engine and ensure the standby light is on ok the standby light is on now so now you can see the generator load is 128.4 kilowatts so now from a dead ship condition we have started the emergency generator and using the emergency generator power we have started the main generator and now we can start the machineries one by one so the starting of the various machineries we will be seeing in the next module. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please do like and subscribe to our channel those who haven't yet subscribed. Thank you.